And now for the perfect pose. Ah! Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, we're going to be checking out this Gravedigger Trax RC vehicle from Spin Masters. I saw this at New York Toy Fair. You may have seen it featured in that video. It is fantastic. I got to get this out of the package and plugged in so it can start charging so we can really check it out. I'm also going to be talking about a recent disaster I had with a Motu Classics figure while trying to set up my display. Um, you guys saw me starting that on a recent episode. I've got some new to the collection things to talk about and more. Stick around. As I mentioned in the intro, my friends at Spin Master sent over the Monster Jam Trax Gravedigger toy for me to check out. This is a super cool RC vehicle, and because it has treads on it, it can climb over almost anything, and it has a big foam section underneath, so these treads can work as a paddle to make it move through water. Uh, there's a little charging point here on the dashboard, so you can hook it up uh, to a USB brick, plug it in, or I plug it into my laptop, charge it up relatively quickly, and was able to drive around my backyard up hills, over stones, uh, battling with sticks. It was phenomenal. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's a little hard to test it on water this time of year. I have seen some of these other RC vehicles from Spin Masters on water. I'm going to try and get a little water test for you guys to check it out. Um, but this thing is super cool. Uh, I saw it at Toy Fair, totally blown away by it. Uh, it goes really quick, so it can do little pop of wheelies and, and, and climb over great stuff. One of my stepsons actually circled it in one of those like toy books you get in the mail from Amazon or Target or somebody. Um, so kids think it's cool. Adults think it's cool. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, you can tell, I'm sure, from the, the footage of it driving around that it's, you know, it's pretty powerful. So in a recent episode, I was working on my Masters of the Universe Classics display. Big display case with six shelves. I was working on the Masters and the Evil Warriors uh, and some other bad guys at the bottom. Flip to the other side. Princess of Power, the Horde, and uh, other versions of the good guys. Possibly, uh, maybe 2000X mostly focused there. You, know, you have to think about what characters they made in 2000X and how you kind of divide them into six groups. And my Swift Wind, before I moved, had some issues where his front hooves were kind of always leaning in together. I used to have Shira on top of them, and I feel like it warped the one leg. Um, and a couple different times I would put like a little space or a little block of wood or a little piece of plastic between the legs to try to splay them back out. And eventually I took Shira off, uh, off of Swift Wind so that way I wasn't continuing to put pressure there. Then everything got bagged and put into a bin for storage to move, and... When I got Swiftwind back out, as you saw in the beginning, his legs are really leaning in together. And if I put the leg in here, you can kind of see how it looked. And I was just kind of concerned about it, and I decided I wondered if it would look better if the leg was just tilted back a little bit instead of being straight out, uh, maybe being less noticeable. And when I tried to bend it, psh, the leg snapped off my Swiftwind. And to be honest, Swiftwind is one of my favorite Princess of Power characters. Um, if you look at my animation cell collection, you will notice there are quite a few Swiftwind and Spirit, his un-superpowered version, uh, in that collection, just to kind of show how much I, I like this character. I used to actually own three of these. I had two loose ones and a boxed Swiftwind. Um, I went crazy with some of these characters and bought extras of some of them. I actually had ones on display. Some of the core characters I had extra copies of that I used to use for stop motion animation. Octavia, I am putting you in charge of destroying the princess of power. Do not fail me. Huh? <laughs> Morph. 
Marshall, why do I have to wait out here with these chumps? Hey. Well, 3030, I don't rightly know what their policy is on robo-horses, but it looks like everyone else left their four-legged friends outside. What if I go in on my hind legs? <laughs> well, big pard, let's not rock the stagecoach. Darn it! Back when the line was going on, sometimes I would animate these little ads like to, to kind of advertise the subscription, or I would put little animations into the um, reviews. And some of those main characters, I didn't want to like wear out my display versions or have to pull them out of the display all the time. So He-Man, Battle Cat, Swift Twin, Shira. Skeletor, Hordak, and a couple other people I had doubles of and would animate with those. And um, and then I speculated on a lot of stuff with the main characters and saved them and sold them. And uh, that did work out well. I made some money uh, doing that. But uh, all the doubles are gone now. Double loose, double, um, you know, packaged things. I sold them when I moved. And uh, and then I broke Swiftwind. And looking them up online... He's two to three hundred dollars. Um, that's probably what I got for the one I sold that was still in the package. Um, and now I'm trying to debate whether I'm going to hunt down a new one or if I'm just going to glue this leg back on. I really hate doing that. Um, we make fun of Tony from Hack the Movies all the time for hot glue in his toys. Um, but it is a reality that things do break, and unless you're going to replace them, what do you do? Um, I might try and toy polloy this. I'm considering drilling holes and super gluing um, paper clips and trying to see if I can resurrect this joint. Because um, I need a Swift one on display. Even if I do buy a new one at some point, uh, until that point, I need a Swift one on display next to Shira in this cabinet. I've got a few shots here of the cabinet in progress. I have a lot of the animated versions down on the bottom shelf right now, which I don't think they're going in the case itself. Uh, at my old house, the animated guys were up on top. They were kind of the last releases, and the case was pretty full, so they were up on the top, kind of where they could collect a lot of dust, but also, so that way, I wasn't repeating all the characters too much. You know, I can't have too many versions of He-Man and Man-at-Arms and Skeletor in the same display. Um, and since they're a different style, uh, that's where I kind of stuck them, the club filmation stuff. And uh, I think I'm probably going to do that again this time. I've also opened up some more masters. I mentioned I had some stuff still in the package. I just ran out of room for certain things. Uh, here's the filmation version of Mantena. Never took him out of the package, but he is super cool. And uh, so, yeah, I'm working on opening up a few of these things, trying to work on that display. It's not as far along as I would like it to be. I actually got distracted and started working in another section of the basement here. Um, I had a little section kind of between the corner of my carded figure wall and the shelf where I'm keeping my Power Ranger collection. And I measured that space out and I ordered uh, some like DVD shelves that would fit there. It doesn't quite fill the space perfectly. There's actually like a little skinny gap between the two sets of shelves that I might make a custom thing where I could put just a couple of larger figures in that gap. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I started messing with my vintage Kenner Star Wars guys and some other things on that shelf. Because I, I actually wanted to put that shelf in to see how much wall space was left. Because I still had some Carded Joes that I wanted to kind of finish out. Um, I think my Carded Joe collection has maxed itself out. Uh, there's just not more wall space. So I think I'm going to have to resist if I see any other Carded Joes at a good price. I think, I think I'm done on them. Uh, I never meant to be a Carded Collector. I always liked my toys loose and that became a slippery slope i, I got a couple carded joes just because i like the idea of having like a carded representation like i think i got the street fighter chun li and uh, a star brigade guy and then eventually i got somebody a little bit oh i got a couple of the fun school joes and picked like 85 86 type guys to have sort of the classic packaging or as close to the classic packaging as i could get cheap in that uh, early 2000s era, and then it became a slippery slope, and I started buying a lot of carded figures, and they look fantastic, they really are cool, but, uh, you know, they're trapped in their little bubbles there, and, uh, you can't play with them. So anyway, I eventually, there's gonna be a whole video about that carded wall, but I'm trying to, like, clean up around it, um, there's just a lot of stuff from me sorting and organizing, and I, I need to straighten that up a little bit more so I can kind of shoot that wall a little bit better, uh, and I will definitely show off the Kenner Star Wars stuff when I kind of solidify that corner a little bit more.
As for new to the collection, I got some cool stuff in recently. This is sort of an update on a previous news item, not really news item, but new to the collection item. I mentioned I had ordered some Ultimate Ninja Turtles from Super 7, and they sent me two Space Cadet rafts. They have fixed my problem and sent me a Genghis Frog, uh, so I do appreciate that. Kudos to their customer service uh, department there, so that's awesome. Uh, they told me I need to send back the RAF in an email before they sent me this one. I was actually expecting, like, a return label in the box with this one. So I still have to kind of follow up and see what's going on there. Recently, the G.I. Joe comics have picked back up. So I got the um, new issue 301. All right, here's issue 301 of G.I. Joe. This is the ongoing story. Marvel ran the original G.I. Joe through 155. Then IDW ran it through issue 300, and now 301 is starting off uh, with Image, and it's through Skybound. There's like a, another series. The Larry Hama series is going to be, the, you know, I guess has the Image branding there, um, but there's going to be a G.I. Joe and Transformers Energon universe going on through Skybound. Um, so they released G.I. Joe number one here with the Skybound banner on it, and this has one little edit to it. This has a um, a little speech from Hawk that was edited by the Marvel editor. Uh, so now this is the way Larry Hama always wanted it. So that's kind of cool. Um, they actually released it with a the original cover and a Cobra homage cover. And I also got Void Rituals, which is a comic by Robert Kirkman. And this seems to be kind of the kickoff to uh, the Energon universe kind of stuff, because uh, Starfire, Jetfire is in here. Um, I didn't read any of these yet. I am so far behind on comics, uh, but I think this is going to be kind of my jumping off point. I'm going to start reading these so I can keep moving forward. Um, I used to read the G.I. Joe comics all the time, the Hama series, and uh, I just got behind towards the end when 300 was coming up. I bought them all, but uh, never finished reading them. So I'm going to start with moving forward with 301, and eventually I'm going to go backwards and read the Handful of issues I missed at the tail end of IDW. Some of you may have heard Super 7 uh, through Big Bad Toy Store is blowing out some toys. Tons of stuff on clearance from the Ultimates line. Kind of a kick in the teeth if you've been collecting a lot of Ultimate stuff for a while. Um, but I decided to take advantage of the sale and pick up not doubles of anything I already had, uh, but two characters that I, I passed on. Um, they're doing a lot of Disney characters, and... Uh, Disney is really cool. I like Disney a lot. Don't collect a ton of Disney memorabilia, but I love Disney. When the Ultimates line came out, I kind of told myself, I am going to skip this. I'm going to avoid this unless they do Sword in the Stone, uh, which is my all-time favorite Disney animated film. I don't know if they'll ever get to it because the Rescuers didn't fund, um, and now they're d deep discounting a lot of these other ones. So I, I don't know for sure, um, but I did get the Robin Hood figures. So I got Little John. And I got Robin Hood. These are the two figures made from that movie. And Robin Hood is probably my second favorite Disney animated movie uh, from, you know, kind of my childhood era. Like, b made before I was a kid, so I saw them when I was really little, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, and then, like, late elementary school or middle elementary school was kind of the Disney Renaissance. And, uh, you know, Little Mermaid, Lion King, Aladdin, all those classics came out. And, uh, you know, Lion King, Aladdin, um, two, two of the greatest Disney movies ever made, in my opinion. Um, but Sword in the Stone has always kind of held a special place from kind of like my whole uh, Disney watching experience. When these figures came in, my stepsons actually asked if they could open up the box. And uh, they pulled these open, and they were super impressed. They really like Robin Hood. They I said they watched it a bunch of times at their dad's house. And uh, they were actually guessing who they were going to be while they were in the cardboard shippers. Uh, my one son thought the elephant guard guy was going to be one of them, uh, which is pretty funny. He actually knew his name, but I forget what, what he said it was now. Little John, I think, would really help complete this set, obviously. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't think they're coming back around to do more characters. A Alice in Wonderland might have been the only series to kind of get a second wave. They did, uh... or did they not do two waves? 
Maybe they didn't. They did No, they did Alice and the Mad Hatter. They did the Queen of Hearts, who came with like a little slug version of the King of Hearts. Did they do something else? I don't know. But I feel like they did kind of two groupings from that one. The other big thing I got was a box of the Star Wars Retro Collection. Star Wars Retro Collection is reissues of the Kenner figures, uh, plus sometimes some new characters done in that retro style. So they have done uh, a Grand Mouth Tarkin figure that came with a board game. They did a Luke Skywalker in his Hoth X-Wing outfit that came in a board game. I think they did a Sand Trooper that came in a board game. Uh, and then they've done a bunch of like the modern Disney era shows in retro style. So like there's Ahsoka and Mandalorian figures, things like that. Um, and they've been doing a lot of these. They first were released at retail, but now they sort of seem to be online or specialty shop kind of situations. So this box set's based on Return of the Jedi. So there you've got Admiral Akbar. Retro trap! So they come on nice retro card backs. They have some like wear and tear kind of like built into the card design. It has a giant retro sticker covering up part of the picture. Um, and a pretty faithful recreation of the figure with their accessory inside the bubble. Some people really don't like these because they're reissuing them. Some people love them because they're reissuing them. It's kind of mixed bag to me. I, I don't think it's hard to get most of the vintage collection. I mean, you know, obviously we know the last 17 is hard to get. But like Akbar, uh, his little staff might be tricky to get. But there's a lot of Akbars out there. So the, the need to reissue him doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, there's the Gamorrean Guard. When I was setting up my display, I had at least six Gamorrean Guards. I've, I've got four, I think, in the display now and two that I pulled out to possibly get rid of. Um, and I have multiple axes. Not not one for every one of the ones I have, but uh, he just... I, I don't know if it's because he's such a chunky figure. He didn't get lost in kids' collections. He was easy to find at yard sales over the years, cheaply. The Royal Guard, the Emperor's Royal Guard, was this... Dinosaur Dracula, Matt from Dinosaur Dracula's pick for the coolest vintage Star Wars figure. He did a an article with Pixel Dan one time. I'm pretty sure this was his pick. Uh, it's a cool figure. I don't have a, the original staff for my Royal Guard. Who do we have here? Wicket. The Ewok. A little shorty. Uh, he's got his little staff in there and his little tunic. And then kind of the most interesting figures in here. The reason I bought this set, Mon Mothma. This is an all-new figure created in the Kenner style. She did not get a figure in the original line, uh, although she should have gotten one. It's kind of fun to get her. She comes with, like, the Princess Leia blaster. She looks pretty great. Many Bothans died to get us this action figure. And the last figure in this set, possibly the most controversial, is Yak Face. Yak Face is probably the rarest figure in the original Kenner run. And people always have conflicting views on them reissuing the Grail items. Uh, you know, as somebody who has an original Yak Face and paid a decent amount of money for it, it's kind of weird. It kind of feels like it cheapens it a little bit now that you can just get this guy. I mean, you had to buy the whole box, so it's not like you just get him for 10 bucks. You did have to sink $60 into the set or whatever it cost. It's a little weird to me, like, to just know you can just get him now super easy and no hunting. Not that this one is the original, and there's people that are willing to pay for an original and people that just never would. Uh, so this satisfies those people, but there's got to be a certain percentage of people kind of in the middle that would at least want to get the original uh, and just will never spend the money. I would love to know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on toy companies reissuing, like, Grail items. Um, you know, they, they want to redo Farm Boy Luke or the classic Vader. They made... Hundreds of thousands of them. They're very common. Um, but they want to reissue a figure that didn't even get released uh, in a, like a normal circumstance as a mainstream release. Uh, it's a little weird. I don't know. What are your thoughts? You know, if they were redoing G.I. Joe and we've had some kind of re O-ring reissues, if they were making them look exactly like the originals, and they redid some of the rarest figures uh, and kind of flooded the market, made it super available. Would you have a problem with that or would you celebrate that? That, hey, everybody that ever wanted this guy's now got one. I can I can totally see both sides of the card. And to be honest, I bought this whole box just to open my Mothma. I might hang this guy on my wall. The rest of them I'm probably going to part with because I don't really 
need a bunch of reissued figures because I had the vintage the vintage ones. Um, and I wouldn't take the weapons from the reissues and put them with my vintage figures. Um, I just display my guys without accessories if they don't have the accessories. You know, I um, I don't pose them with the reproductions or whatever. Uh, I don't want to mix them. It just kind of makes things messy down the road to try and remember where these accessories came from. And, uh, you know, I have a feeling that someday someone other than me is going to deal with a lot of the stuff that's down here. And, uh, you know, makes it a little bit easier for them if I'm not really mixing and matching stuff too much that way. Of course, you do what you want with your collection. You make the rules totally up to you. I was hoping to have something a little bit more substantial for you guys. I really thought I was going to have a lot of time to shoot this weekend, like over Thanksgiving and things like that. And then all the time got sucked up with working on that display that isn't quite ready to be shown off. Uh, so I am sorry that there's not more progress with the display. I had a ton of fun playing with the Monster Jam Grave Digger Trax vehicle from Spin Master. Uh, great idea for a Christmas present for somebody. Uh, you don't know what to get your brother-in-law. Uh, get him an RC car. They are fun for people of all ages. And it's nice. You only need batteries for the remote. Uh, the vehicle itself charges by USB, which is handy. Got lots of new stuff in the collection and broke. Ugh. Disaster. Broke a pretty valuable toy. So it's been, it's been a week for collectors, I guess. What's going on with you guys? My buddy at Ultra Lager from Twitter has been sending me pictures of his Ollie's hunts, uh, inspired by my Ollie's episode and John's field report the other week. And he's been sending me pictures. He's been finding lots of Transformers, but no luck finding the G.I. Joes down in Maryland. What a shame. I, where did the Joes go? There was even an ad that, that they had Joes for five bucks. I'd be happy to buy a few Joes from Holly's if I could find them. But it is what it is. I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. We're heading into the holiday season, which is there's always a lot of hustle and bustle. I'm going to a toy show in York, Pennsylvania. So that will be an upcoming episode. I hope to be able to show off more of the work on the Motu Classics display and the vintage Star Wars display uh, as I get a chance to kind of tidy those things up. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so. If you want to support the channel further, consider joining us on Patreon. Share this video with a toy collecting friend. And thanks for hanging on the peg with me.